Java. Java, like several other object-oriented languages, combines certain key features. Encapsulation. Objects in Java are encapsulated through the use of classes and functions. Code is made modular, is reusable, is easily modified, and is more easily divided into multi-team projects that can then be reassembled. One of those features is the idea of encapsulation. Encapsulation is just what it sounds like. It's the idea of writing code that encapsulates or combines the features, the data, the methods, the functions of an object. In the pursuit of encapsulation, Java classes and interfaces seek to model real-world systems by combining what an object is with what it does. So using classes, functions, and other structures in Java, the idea is to more closely model a real-world system by combining what an object is and what it has with what it does. Data hiding separates the complexity of an object from its use such that functions, classes, and objects can be used without an intimate understanding of their mechanics. Another such key concept is that of data hiding. Believe it or not, we practice data hiding on a daily basis. Millions of people everywhere get in their cars and they drive from point A to point B. They don't necessarily understand how to create a combustion engine from scratch or how to create a steel auto body or how to create all the electronics that go into a modern engine. They may or may not know how to repair some parts but they couldn't actually create the entire thing. This, however, does not stop them from using a car to get from point A to point B. Data hiding? Let's extrapolate this idea a bit further with the automobile analogy. The reason people can drive an automobile without having to know how to create one from scratch is because of data hiding. The intricacies, the complexity of the automobile is hidden from them. They simply need to memorize the rules of the road, how to use the steering wheel, how to accelerate by pressing the gas pedal, or how to stop by pressing the brakes. They know to put gas in it when it needs fuel, and perhaps check the oil every now and then. Likewise, when data hiding is practiced in a software language such as Java, you write functions and classes and programs and interfaces, uh, libraries of code that can be used by other people, members of your team, or even a third party and they're able to use it without having to reverse engineer it or reinvent the wheel or, or understand all of its intricacies because you write it in such a way that you hide the complexity from them. You allow them to pass in arguments and parameters and make use of your hard work and your functions and you can do the same with theirs. This allows large complex applications to be created with a minimal amount of effort. In addition to ease of use and the management of complexity, data hiding allows different parties to distribute market, obfuscate and protect their intellectual property. Another ability that data hiding gives a modern object-oriented language is that if you're a company, um, you know, say you're a company producing a game engine, you can create a product and you can hide your trade secrets. You don't have to give them away, but I can sell you my game engine, my product, and you can use it to create a game. You can make money and I'll make money. You'll pay me some royalties for it and I give you an application programming interface, or I may give you a list of parameters, or I may give you a language such as Unreal Script, um, but I don't give you the trade secrets. I don't actually give you the code to my game engine itself. So in this way, um, I, you're able to stand upon my work, and I'm able to profit from yours. So there's another key feature of data hiding. To summarize, data hiding shortens the learning curve, allows collaboration, greater sophistication and complexity of software, and the distribution and compatibility of different packages by different organizations. Again, one of the central ideas behind data hiding is to write functions, classes, and create objects that are easier to use. By hiding their complexity, you simplify their use, and by simplifying their use, um, you greatly increase the efficiency with which they can be employed in applications and projects. Inheritance allows the organization and reuse of code through hierarchies. As in biology, a child object or subclass inherits attributes and abilities from its parent object or superclass. Another key concept in Java is that of inheritance. As in C++, inheritance works like it does biologically. In Java you have superclasses or parent objects um, such as abstract data types or ADTs and these give birth to child objects, which would be known as subclasses. 
and these subclasses may themselves become superclasses and give birth to their own child classes. So you have a hierarchy, sort of like a family tree. And inheritance works from the ADTs and the parent objects at the top all the way down to the child objects at the bottom. By placing code, data members, functions, methods higher up into the class hierarchy, uh, that code is able to trickle down into thousands of objects that inherit from parent objects and superclasses. Inheritance allows code and ADDs, or abstract data types, and superclasses to be reused in subclasses, lessening the need to reinvent the wheel or engage in fruitless repetition. So this allows you to reuse code and allows you to write a lot less code and you know, still use those functions, those methods in your objects. Polymorphism, one function, class or object can take multiple forms through the overloading and overriding of operators and functions. This enhances Java's elegance. Java also practices what we call polymorphism. Think about the name, poly being many, morph to change. Mighty Morphing Power Rangers. Well, <laughs> polymorphism simply means that one function, class, or object in Java can take multiple forms. And this can be very useful. Instances where you may do this in Java would include function overloading, where you would overload and create functions with the same name at the same level in your inheritance hierarchy that may take different arguments or parameters, and overriding, where you may create functions with the same name at different levels in your inheritance hierarchy. And they also could take you know, d different parameters.